while Sean gets undressed. Welcome back for the Burb Junkies. I'm Dan. Sean's checking his hair in the camera. And today we drink scotch. All right, so we have two bottles here, clearly. Yeah, clearly. me and Dan went through the uh, April. May. Sec, May. First May, oh wow. Yeah. Me and Dan went through the first drop in May. Yep, first outturn. Yeah, just Tuesday. If you don't know, Scotch Malt does two outturns a month generally. This month is actually festival month, so there's way more drops in May. First and third Thursday, Tuesday. Jesus. Uh, yeah, Sean, uh, you just, you know what? I got it. If you want to just take, just rest oh for a minute, just rest your brain, dude. <laughs> just maybe like reel it back and it's let a, it shut down. It's been a long day. I'm going to pour whiskey because I haven't had any yet. I think that's my issue. Yeah. I've not had enough whiskey. I'm sure that's normal. So yeah, they do, uh, they do drops on the first and third Tuesday of every month. Needless to say, would you end up with Dan we, from this outturn? We each picked a bottle because Sean and I like different, very different scotches generally. We yes. do agree on a lot of scotch, but we like different scotches mainly. So, um, one of this outturns was a peated Highland, and I've come to find out because I hadn't had peated Highlands before Scotch Malt actually at all. Yeah. Uh, huge fan of peated Highland. Which is weird because I'm not a huge fan of normal Highlands. It was so, kind of the notion that you, when you, if you like something peated, you go with an Isla. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you'd always gone into always. Islas. We got sent. Wow. That was, okay. that was I, rough to watch, yeah, buddy. This video's in shambles. <laughs> yeah, so we got sent a Peated Highland a while back, and Dan absolutely loved it. Yes, it's one of my favorite Scotch Malt bottles. I've, I've always loved Highlands. Um, I didn't know they did Peated Highlands either, but I really enjoyed that one Makes too. Makes sense. Um, but I like the Space Sides a lot, and then when uh, Ben told me about this one, this is a 11 year Space Side in Initial Cast, Ex Bourbon Hogshead, and then Final cask, first fill, Oloroso, Hogshead. So one of the things um, with Scotch Malt that we enjoy is the aspect that they're like, every release is barrel proof. Yes. And for Scotch, that's, that's, that's big. different than usual. We've bought a couple bottles that were finishing the same things from the same regions, but they're not from the same distilleries, just so we can kind of like compare something. Yes. Because outside of Scotch Malt, I've never had a peated Highland before. Yeah. Um, I've had non-peated Islas come to find out because we have the Buna Haman that's not peated. Yep. But I've never had peated Islas, so, or Highland. So um, we did grab a Klein Hleisch, and I guarantee I pronounced Nailed that it. correctly, 14 that I'm going to drink next to next my to my Highland. And uh, next to my space side, I got this Abelur Abunda. Probably didn't murder that one. Uh, but this is another um, cast strength. Space side, what is going on over there? I think I broke that cork when I put it back in. Okay, so this is a cash strength space side that's also finished in, I think, Sherry, right? Oloroso, yep. So. Very similar. That's Peter's still gone. There. The misbehaving in a country Ooh. house is still there. Can we also take a quick second to talk about their naming scheme that they Fantastic. go through? It's just amazing. This is entering uncharted paths. Yeah. So um, the misbehaving in the country house that is a space side, which mm -hmm. was an ex bourbon hogshead, and then a first fill ex Oloroso, is Society Cask Hundred is the distillery, and it's number twenty nine from there. The entering uncharted paths, in case you got one, is Society Cask number sixteen, and it's number sixty from there. So I feel like everything peated from Scotch Malt. Yeah, sells out fast. Goes out so fast. Yeah, people like peated whiskey right now. Yeah, that's a big thing. I think they just want to be hurt. I get it. Yeah. Also, look at how like rose colored that is. Yeah. Like that, look, look next to yours. Oh yeah. Oh, it really comes out that yeah. way. The the Abelur is dark, but it doesn't have that like red tint to the it. The is like, looks like it was in a wine barrel, honestly. Mm -hmm. Dark. Like it looks whiny. Oh my. What we're gonna do here, I just actually realistically wanna see the difference between a shelf bottle and a Scotch small bottle. Yeah. Um, There's like a, 40, 35, $40 price range difference between these two, but this Klein Leash isn't cast strength. It's actually 92 proof. These are very so, close in price proof, stuff like that. Almost, yeah. yeah. Those are hyper similar um, in a lot of ways. I've, I've got 57.2% here and 59.8% here. So a little, little more proof on that one. The fact that you risked it. Risked it? Risked it or risked wow, it? both. Oh my God, this just smells like Okay, I haven't smelled yours yet. Whoa, that smells incredible. Like red fruit and marshmallows. That's the fruitiest fruiter it's of fruit. Amazing. I've never smelled more fruit in one moment. It feels like it's toasted too. Like there's something like very warm and rich and inviting about this that I love. Oh, it's so, whoa. 
It's all fruit. Um, I've had this, I, I'd opened mine Holy before because I didn't want to wait. Um, I think the finish really catches you by surprise because it's so I soft up front. Fruit. And then like that proof just carries through and you're like, heck yeah. It's like a velvet Ooh. blanket while you're nakedly laying on silk sheets. That's exactly what that's like. I'm sure they will. Let's put that on a bottle. That'll sell. But I, okay, <laughs> listen, we've read way crazier stuff than mm -hmm. that. Um, mine is super Ugh. earthy, but the weird part is since I drank yours, I smell marshmallow here now, and there wasn't marshmallow in this before. You would love that. Tastes like grapefruit. Oh, it's like salty grapefruit that's with like smoke. Oh, that's my jam right that's there. That's really interesting. So it sounds like I got two bottles this month. That's that. No, it's um, bottle and a half. It's like sweet grapefruit though. It's not like tart. It's like that. It's brined and sweet at the oh. same time. It's actually really interesting. That's nothing like the other Peated Highland that we have over there. At I can all. tell it's it's really throwing you because I've watched you try to set down that glass three times now. All right, now I want to try this Klein Leaf I, 14. I, I could be uh, persuaded to see a little uh, this grapefruit on that. This smells sweeter, mass markety. That smells like, hey, you love whiskey and you really like Peated Whiskey. That's your jam type thing. Oh my, okay. Um. So anyways. I'm just gonna go back to that. That good, huh? Well, you know, there is I don't actually think that there's anything wrong with that whiskey. I think the problem is that's the most underwhelming $80, $90 bottle of whiskey I've ever had after drinking this one. From the Scotch malt finish, I wanna know finishing time just a little bit. Because yeah. that feels finished. Like that sweet, that smells it so has good. all that wine, winey flavor in there. This smells like Christmas. I just, I'm trying to give you that. At some point, I do want you to drink these next week. I know, but I don't want to go. Because it's so important to understand the value difference here. You know how you and I often say, well, this one's more, but we would pay up for it, right? Yeah. This one's 50, that one's 30. I just paid them 20. Always a value asset. That was 80 or 90, and this is like 125. And I would l never, ever, never, not once in my life, not pay up if these were my options. Oh, that's really good. It's really soft though. That's barrel proof? It's higher, it's 59. So that was one of the reasons that we grabbed this one is because it's actually cast strength. It's hard to find, it's kind of hard to find cast strength scotch. That's really good. That's pretty damn good. But there's like, the finish is like kind of flat. There's nothing. Comparatively. Like this, that, this has like the proof and that's the a journey that comes through. Yeah. yeah. This kind of, for almost 60%. This is like Lord of the Rings, like... right? Okay. And then this is like a knockoff of Hunger Games. Um, you start in one place and you found that volcano. At the end, there's griffins. There's a dragon. You've never read the book. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, what my, my first thought was is when you get a Scotch malt bottle, you're yeah. getting a one of one. It's There's so much they're, better. They're, they're put out and like the descriptions on them are beautiful. And everything yeah, about true. them, they're selected to be good whiskey yeah. that people want. Where is you grabbing something off the shelf that's mass marketed, that's gonna be something that they're looking for repeatability, yeah. that's batched usually. Sure. Um, so it's a blended product that you're just trying to create the past where these are feeding their own path Generally. into things. Yeah. But the difference is I think that the journey you go on with this bottle, once you put this ring on, you're turning into <laughs> really, Schmeagle really and you're it. never getting out of it. It makes you invisible, it's so damn powerful. We've on done it. one comparison ever to from Scotch malt to normal shelf bottles. Mm -hmm. And the Scotch malt won for us, it was in a blind. We did a Yeah, it went in close. Anyways, needless to say, uh, yeah, man. these are both great. Honestly, this one being gone, the, I, the, even the, having both of these, yeah. I actually preferred this one. I, I like so that So I would one. buy that one anyways. I really like that one too. I do too, but that one. That's an experience right When there. you get a really good space side, when you get a really, really good space side. Uh-huh you start to get these really cool flavors and the hyper awesome complexities that like I don't get from any other scotch. Honestly, if you want to get into scotch or if you're into scotch, this is, it's not, it's really not close, uh, honestly. We, we've we got uh, another video coming out next month that we're going to outline some of the, the customer service aspects of it. So if you are a person yeah. getting into you know, coming from the world of bourbon or whatever into scotch, yeah. they, they will help, help you. you. Yeah, for, they, will, they will literally Taylor, pick yeah. a bottle, asking you a couple questions, being like, all right, I think you would like this bottle. If you're a member, they'll help you. Yeah. Like, yeah, that which is crazy. Like, they'll, like, you can call them yep. on the phone and they'll figure it out for you. We're going to do that next month. Yeah, we'll talk about that more next month. But, all right, we love you guys. Uh -huh. We're the bourbon junkies. You know what makes me really happy that we have The one? proof is in. This ah, one, yes. The one that's very close to it, but 24 years old. It's, it's called that. That's why I said it's that. It's literally called Proof's ah, yes. Proof's in the floor. Proof's in the floor.